if your needs are unmet in marriage, we can't meet our own needs we, or we wouldn't get married. Um, the best thing to do is call redemptive love. And, you know, some people get frustrated with this, but Jesus uh, in 1 Peter 2, we're told that he's our example, that when we were doing the wrong thing, he was doing the right thing. And he died for us when we were still in our sins. And then 1 Peter 3, which flows right from that, talks to husbands and wives about how to treat their spouse when their spouse is not doing the right thing. And it, in both cases, it tells us to love them with redemptive love, the way Jesus did with us, to love them when they're doing the wrong thing, because through that, God will redeem our spouse. It's called redemptive love. The only way you can defeat a spirit is with the opposite spirit. And so if someone is not meeting your needs, you meet their needs. If someone is not treating you right, you treat them right. I'm not talking about abuse where you're being damaged. I'm just talking about you're being ignored. You're not, you're not being loved the way you want. Is you serve your spouse. And from serving, see, when you're not serving your spouse, you have very little uh, you know, voice into their lives. If you're not doing anything for me, then what are you going to say to me? But when you're meeting your spouse's needs, you're actually in a power position to change them. This is why Karen changed me. I was a terrible husband. But rather than attacking me and making it about me, Karen made it about herself. And she went before God and said, this isn't about Jimmy, this is about me. And the Lord began to change her and she began to love me. It, it turned me around. Now, if a person's not meeting your sexual needs, in other words, if you're in a sexless marriage, you know, if, if, if both of you agree not to have sex, that's great. But if you've been abandoned sexually, and your spouse, literally, it's, it's an abandonment. Your spouse is just, you're living in the same house, but they have just abandoned you. That's different. And in those cases, I would encourage you to get counseling. But if you've been sexually abandoned, and you, you might move out. You know, you might have them move out. And just say, you know, you're no longer a part of this relationship. You're doing nothing to meet my needs. And so I'm not going to give you the benefits of, of marriage when, you're, when you've abandoned me. And so that's, that's a last resort. But in some cases, when a person, you know, first, the Jesus said if a person divorces his wife except for adultery, he commits adultery and causes her to commit adultery. But then the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 7 says, if an unbelieving spouse will not live with you, you're free in regard to the law. Well, unbeliever there is not just talking about a person who's a Christian or not a Christian. He's talking about a person who's not obeying Christ. They're not believing in what the Bible says and what they should be doing in the marriage. And they effectively have abandoned the marriage. And it says you're free. So abandonment, abuse, and adultery can be uh, the grounds for divorce, first of all, separation and divorce. But my encouragement to you would be, first of all, to try a constructive separation where you tell your spouse that you love them and that you give them an opportunity to, to respond to what you're saying. In a worst case situation, if you feel like you've just been abandoned in the marriage, that's including sex, that uh, I believe it can be grounds for divorce, but you need to get good counseling, you need to have some good people around you, godly people, and you need to take one step at a time. But if your needs are not getting met, just in general, that you know, in, in marriage, my encouragement to you would be to practice redemptive love, not for a day or a two, but for a period of time and love your spouse and believe God to turn their heart around.